in recognition of your distinguished career in broadcasting and your flair for telling a story, Quinnipiac University is pleased to confer upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters this 12th day of May, 2013. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, Denise. It's my pleasure to introduce Quinnipiac University's newest alumna, Denise DeCenzo, to give the commencement address. President Leahy, trustees, faculty, family, and friends, and most especially graduates, I am so honored to share this special day with you. Today we celebrate your accomplishments and recognize the hard work, sacrifices, and dedication that brought you here this morning. This day is all about you, well, mostly about you. Let me just take this opportunity to say Happy Mother's Day to all the Quinnipiac moms, both here and in spirit, who helped and supported you all along the way. You know, there's something so promising about Commencement Day. The present beckons with all kinds of exciting possibilities. And the future is anything you want it to be. And why not? You are graduating with an advanced degree from an institution consistently ranked among the best universities in America. From this moment forward, you will be forever tied to Quinnipiac and all the accolades that go with it. Academic excellence, a nationally respected polling institute, and dare I say, the home of one of the best men's college hockey teams in America? Go Bobcats! As graduates, you will also spend the rest of your lives making sure people pronounce it correctly. It's Quinnipiac! No doubt about it, you've been blessed with a top-notch education. There's no question you've excelled as students, but what kind of professionals will you be? What kind of people will you be? As you move into the workforce or continue your studies, your education in many ways is just beginning. You may find yourself in difficult situations that test your integrity and values. You may be forced to defend your priorities and goals. You may be asked to play by rules you do not support. How will you respond? As you leave this campus, life's most important lessons are out there waiting for you. The coming years will bring an explosion in your personal and professional growth. You will acquire a certain wisdom that can only come through experience. As you set out on this amazing learning curve ahead, there are three simple lessons I'd like to share with you to make the journey more insightful. These are lessons I've learned over the course of more than 30 years as a broadcast journalist. That's how long it's taken me to figure this out. After looking back on my own mistakes and learning from the countless people I have interviewed over the years. So here now is my lesson plan for reaching your full potential and living a happier, more satisfying life. Lesson number one, be open to new ideas and possibilities. We spend so much of our lives planning and we get started early. Many of you are just beginning your careers, but already you may be planning and saving for retirement. Just think about the plan you made years ago that propelled you to success today. Do well on those SATs, get your bachelor's, finish grad school at Quinnipiac, and then land that dream job. Planning helps us visualize the future and set goals. It gives us direction and a course of action. There's no doubt about it. Planning is wise and critical for achievement, but would you recognize a great opportunity if it weren't a part of your plan? I didn't. When I was a senior at Syracuse University, one of my journalism professors told me about an opening for a weathercaster at the local ABC affiliate. 
He strongly encouraged me to audition for the job. Whether, I exclaimed, oh no, that was not a part of my plan. My passion was news and I was going to get a job as a news reporter. But my professor wasn't having it. He insisted I apply for the job. So reluctantly I did. When I arrived at the television station to meet the news director, I had to look twice. The man who stood before me could have doubled for Lou Grant on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. He wore a weathered cardigan sweater with a loosened, lopsided tie and a no-nonsense expression to match. And like Mr. Grant, he was just as gruff. Okay, kid, go talk about the weather, he barked at me. So I stood in front of the weather maps and I talked weather, lots of weather. Cold fronts, warm fronts, high pressure, low pressure, you name it. I was pretty convincing. The only problem is I got everything wrong. But somehow this news-hardened teddy bear of a man saw some potential, threw a weather book at me and said, okay, kid, learn your weather. And with that, I was hired. It turned out to be the best possible way to start my career in news. Doing the weather was all ad lib. There was no teleprompter. I had to learn to think on my feet and get myself out of the verbal holes I would dig. It was perfect training for live reporting and later, the anchor desk. The point of my story is, I almost missed out on this amazing opportunity because I was not open to new possibilities that were not a part of my plan. So I say to you this morning, be open. The universe may be leading you down a path you never imagined. That job offer may not be what you had planned. It could just be immeasurably better. Be open and you will never stop learning. Now, lesson number two, be brave, face your fears. I'm not talking about the kind of bravery that sends a firefighter running into a burning building or the kind of courage that it takes to stand up to social injustice. This bravery is much more private, deeply private. It's the quiet courage necessary to confront our own personal fears, the ones we never talk about. We all have them. Maybe it's a fear of rejection, a fear of appealing, appearing foolish, or even a fear of disappointing someone. Fear is a powerful and insidious thief. It will steal your dreams, your self-potential, and even your happiness. And it always wins, unless you stand up to it. I know firsthand. About a year after I arrived at Channel 3, there was a devastating construction accident in Bridgeport that turned out to be the worst in state history. A high-rise apartment complex under construction collapsed, killing 28 workers. As a massive concrete slab was being lifted into position on the sixth floor, it slipped, causing the building to pancake to the ground, and many of the workers killed were on the lower floors. As we gathered in the newsroom to plan our coverage, I was devastated for the families. And I remember wondering why workers were allowed to remain inside a building while a massive concrete floor was being hoisted into place above their heads. But I said nothing. After all, I was still new, still in my 20s, and I was afraid that I would appear too bold in front of my colleagues. What if they think I'm coming on too strong? What if, God forbid, I'm wrong? In the days that followed, I watched how that unspoken question became a central part of the investigation, eventually leading to changes in the lift slab construction technique. My instincts were correct, but I wasn't brave enough to act on them. I allowed fear to silence me. When you give in to fear, you hold yourself back and you stifle any chance of personal growth. It's not easy overcoming fear, but it's absolutely essential that you try. Succeed in conquering your fear, and the payoff is a liberation like you've never known. Now accept there will be some criticism along the way. No matter how much you accomplish, no matter how honorable your pursuits, there will always be someone there to criticize you. Remember though, the mean-spirited critics are often standing on the sidelines of life. They're not in the game striving to be the best they can be. Their criticism may even be rooted in their own personal disappointments. So why give that kind of criticism any weight? If you remember one piece of advice I give you today, remember this, never give anyone the power 
to make you doubt yourself. And never forget, you have a mighty weapon against self-doubt right here, the gut. Learn to trust it, it will never fail you. Guidance that comes from the gut is unmistakable. The gut won't pose a single one of those what-if questions. What if I fail? What if they don't like me? What if I can't do the job? That's fear talking. Your gut will not pepper you with any questions at all. You will know with absolute certainty what it is you are to do or say. Your gut can help you face your fears. So I say to you, be brave and you will achieve more than you ever dreamed. Finally, rule number three, be kind in your words and actions. The world that awaits you is a vastly different world than we faced in the past. It is more dangerous and more unpredictable. For more than three decades, my career has afforded me a front row seat to history, but the view most of the time has not been pretty. Let's face it, the nature of news is negative, and most people who end up in the headlines are not there because they've done something noble. I've covered it all, from horrendous crimes to unspeakable violence. September 11, 2001 was my worst day as a journalist, until this past December, when 20 children and six adults were killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Certain events just change you forever. It's not easy maintaining a positive outlook after seeing that level of anguish. But what I'm about to say may surprise you. I am as hopeful as I've ever been about the future, your future. You see, I've come to believe there are far many more good people in the world who instinctively turn to a powerful antidote to human suffering. It's kindness. Time and time again, I've seen how the worst in human behavior brings out the best in human behavior. After every tragedy, every trauma, acts of kindness ease the suffering and help people heal. Whether it's raising money for the victims of the Boston Marathon bombing or collecting food and clothing for those who lost everything in Superstorm Sandy, kindness matters. And it doesn't have to be on a large scale. I think one of the most important ways we make a difference in the lives of others is in those private acts of kindness that go unrecognized. If you're beginning your career as a teacher, a journalist, a business person, a medical professional, a scientist, a social worker, why not be a kind one? Wherever you go from here, set an example by doing your job and living your life with kindness. Be kind and you will be more at peace with the world. So there you have it, my personal guidepost for growth. You will make mistakes along the way, we all do, but ultimately your biggest test will be in how you respond to them. When you stumble, always try to do the next right thing. In closing, I share with you one of my favorite quotes, the words of St. Francis of Assisi. All the darkness in the world cannot extinguish the light of a single candle. As you leave Quinnipiac today, be that light in all that you do. Choose to reflect the goodness of humanity. And one by one, you'll make the world a little brighter. Good luck to all of you, and God bless. Thank you.